Hey guys, Diane Burrows from birdsupplies.com and today I am here with my Timna African Grey Timmy. He's kind of blurred in the background, but Timmy's a, a 22 year old Timna African Grey and in January he had an injury where he um, gotten into a squabble with Smokey, my other African Grey, and he got bit. And so uh, he was in treatment and seen, he was seen by an avian vet in January. And um, then in February, I noticed he wasn't getting well as quickly or recovering as quickly as I wanted him to. And so I took him into the avian vet again. And I was shocked when she told me, well, you know he's a senior bird, don't you? I don't know why I was shocked. I guess I was in denial. I didn't want to hear it. But uh, today's video is going to be about five ways to help your aging senior bird live a happier, healthier lifestyle. So um, I guess, you know, one of the first things I want to talk about is that how do you know when your bird is getting older? Now, I in my head, I knew Tim, that Tim was, you know, 22, um, but I... I guess using the the word senior kind of uh, shocked me when I heard my vet call him that. Um, so I got to thinking, you know, I can't be the only one who's kind of like in denial that, gee, my parrot is getting older and maybe I need to start thinking about some life stage uh, care routines that can make him more comfortable. Um, so let's talk about how do you know if your parrot's going to be is is getting older or is actually a senior, you know it's getting older, but how do you know when it's becoming what we call a senior bird? A bird that needs some extra or different life care um, or environmental care accommodations and stuff than they did when they were younger. So really you got to think about what is the average lifespan of my particular species of parrot in the first place? Now as a general rule of thumb, you can say that uh, the larger the bird is, the longer their life expectancy usually is. So for instance, you probably hear my Moluccan cockatoo in the background every once in a while. That's Peachy. He's a Moluccan cockatoo. He weighs about 950 grams, pretty big guy. And Moluccan cockatoos have a lifespan of approximately 80 years of age. That is if they have good care and haven't been through trauma and that sort of thing. They have been known to live, you know, in the 80s. Uh, I have a, a Congo African Grey that is 450 grams. And he's, so he's quite a bit bigger than Timmy, who's only 350 grams. So uh, Smokey is a Congo, uh, you know, 450 grams. The larger of the African greys are probably going to have a lifespan in the 50s, whereas Timmy's is probably going to be in the 40s. And then I've got a little tiny uh, Kiwi, my green cheek Conyer. You can hear her too. And uh, she's only 71 grams. And her life expectancy is about 20 to 25 with good care. Um, the only bird that I have that's been rehomed that I don't, that I didn't hand feed or, or nurture or was their first home, uh, was Peachy. Peachy had been rehomed. And I wouldn't say that he was in a traumatic situation, but he ended up getting surrendered to a pet store uh, in Wichita, Kansas. I think he had a good family. I believe the family had to move and couldn't take him. I'm not sure, but uh, that may have been the case there for him. And so, um, uh, that's the only bird that I don't have a good history on per se. Now, um, so if you take the bird's average lifespan, so like say taking Peachy's average lifespan of say 40, I can expect that he's going to start becoming, having showing signs of aging at about 35-ish, 30, 35-ish, anywhere between that, maybe 40, depending on his activity level and that sort of thing. Whereas Smokey, the larger Congo, is probably right about there now. Smokey's, um, I think Smokey's actually two years older. Yes, he is. Smokey's two years older than Timmy. So Smokey's 24 right now. If his average lifespan is 50, he's right there at that senior age as well. And then uh, Timmy, he's 22, I believe, uh, right in that age. And uh, I hadn't fed him as a, a, you know, unfeathered chick practically. And so I know exactly what his life's been all like. But, um, so at 22, he is into the latter half of his life, and that's when the body starts declining. 
And so what are some of the signs that a bird is getting old or that their body is declining? We're all gonna do it, uh, hopefully. Um, you know, a bird that's been well cared for, you know, they kind of reach that plateau and then they start going downhill. But two things kind of work against us as parrot caretakers. First of all, we're with our parrots every single day. And so that decline in activity level and strength and, and stamina happens gradually. And so it may happen so gradually that we may not notice it. But secondly, birds are masters at hiding any pain, illness, and injury. And that is really a deficit for us as caretakers because they don't, they have to hide it in the wild. If they were to show that they were in pain or injured or needed some uh, extra TLC, they would be another predator's lunch or their own flock mates would drive them off. Because if you have a, if you're a flock, if you're a flock species and you're animal of prey, uh, just one sick member, you know, alarms all the predators to come to your flock. And um, then you're putting the entire flock at danger, not just the one animal that is declining in health. So that's why our birds are such masters at hiding their pain, illnesses, and injuries. And I realized that that, that Tim was doing that too. In fact, he, I think he even fooled the vet uh, to a degree in January about his, you know, his uh, health status, if you will. So one thing that uh, is so important to keep in mind is that it is really important to have a great relationship with your avian vet and to keep up with those routine wellness exams on an annual basis, especially as your bird gets older. So um, like I said, I've had Tim in there for an accident in January and she did a good physical exam on him, but she didn't do any blood work or anything or no x-rays or anything like that. And so when I took her in again, when I took Tim into her again, Dr. Dupree in Littleton, um, you know, I asked her, I said, you know, I, he doesn't have the grip, his, uh, his uh, uh, one foot's really kind of warm to the touch, he's perching a lot on the uh, bottom of the cage, um, I, I, he's still active, I've lowered his forging toys and stuff, and he still goes all around and plays with his toys, but still he's does spend more time sleeping during the day. And so, you know, that's when she took the x-rays at my request and we saw the level of um, uh, arthritis and not just his hip joints, but his uh, elbows or knees, whatever you call them on a bird, and then on in several of his toes. So his grip is indeed infected, uh, affected, I'm sorry. So what are the things you can look for as a parrot owner? You can look for things like the decreased interactions. Now, Tim, um, is he's a little prankster with the dogs. You can hear him whistling and he's always teasing our dog and calling him over and he'll call him over and he likes to throw him pellets and, and uh, uh, you know, he's kind of got him wrapped around his finger. And so um, I noticed those behaviors were not present in the last couple of weeks and that was kind of a concern. Then I noticed that he was, he was on the cage. He has a play stand that has a grate so it's one of those avian adventure play stands, as a matter of fact, and he can climb up ladders and climb up, you know, to even another level, if you will. And that activity had decreased. Uh, he was more on the bottom, holding the grades. He was still playing and interacting, but sleeping a little bit more than usual. And, uh, but he wasn't wanting to be up high perching. And so, uh, uh, I noticed that as an issue. Then another thing I noticed is that uh, he, again, he wasn't climbing and perching high. And I believe I, if my memory is serving me correctly, I believe that I had seen him fall off those higher perches. And so he was feeling safer where he could grip the, the tinier bars of um, the uh, uh, grate. And um, so, in the meantime, between those two months, January and February, I had installed a smaller, actually a small bird java perch on his play stand. And I noticed him perching on that a lot more than the larger perches. So uh, one thing then, you know, that I noticed then, not only was he decreased in activity, but he had some guarding behavior. He was guarding himself from falling. He was making some accommodations so he didn't fall off a perch and kind of hanging low so if he did fall, it wouldn't hurt as bad and that sort of thing.
Now, another thing that we sometimes notice with our pet birds, especially if they're in pain and they're guarding, is they don't want to fake it that they're feeling well. And so they might get a little more aggressive than usual to kind of get you to back off so that they don't have to fake being well when in fact they don't feel well. So I didn't notice that with Tim. Um, uh, he gets, he's more of a timid bird. So he got to where he was timid when I was going to pick him up. Uh, Tim the timid bird, huh? Um, and then another thing I noticed with Tam is that he was over grooming that area where he had actually been injured. And that kind of clued me in that he was in pain with that. So over grooming, he's, he's always been a little bit of a plucker of his tail, um, but the area was getting bigger. And so that was a clue. Those four things were telling me, I think he's in pain. And that's when I took him in and made that vet appointment. Even though he'd just seen the vet a couple weeks ago, I wanted a, a follow-up appointment. So pain is our body's way of telling us that something is wrong. And if you're a parent and you, you have to hide that pain, gosh, I can't imagine. Um, that must cause a lot of mental distress. But um, that's kind of hard on us as par parents, if you will. And so go over to my website and look up the pain assessment for bird quiz. It's a blog post, but there's also a book on it. And it's literally a quiz that you can take that will tell you if your bird is in uh, pain. It doesn't really weed out the chronic pain versus acute pain, but it still will give you uh, enough of data that you can go to your avian vet and you can say, I'm feeling like my bird might be in pain. And then your bird doctor can actually start uh, prescribing, you know, some bird safe uh, pain medication. Now, never diagnose your bird yourself per se. I mean, you might have a clue, but you would never want to medicate your bird you, with um, people medicine or dog medicine without your avian vet's uh, input because our birds, their whole uh, internal body system systems are so different than a mammal and they don't react to medications the same way that say a mammal does. So it could be, you know, more harm than good if you were to medicate outside of what your vet, and we're talking prescription grade medication, medicate outside of what your avian vet would recommend. There are some nice herbal plants that you can uh, feed your bird that are pain reducing. Uh, one of them might be dandelion leaves, alfalfa, um, are, is another one. There's about four or five of them, and I've got them in that article on uh, the pain assessment article in the website. So the two things to keep in, into mind are watching your bird's normal daily activities and, and recognizing when things are going downhill. I was able to recognize it pretty quickly that Tim didn't um, recover from that, uh, that injury in January. And then maintaining a relationship with your avian vet and getting treatment, getting in, uh, you know, quickly. Birds can go downhill very quickly. And I remember I, I'd start, it dawned on me on Thursday that I needed to get Tim into the avian vet. And I was kind of worried that he may not make it, you know, because birds can go downhill very quickly. What happens is they have such a high metabolism, but with that, uh, fear of showing that they're in pain, they also can starve themselves to death pretty quickly. And so they'll get weak by not eating and it could happen in just a matter of days. So I was making sure that Tim was okay because I couldn't get into the vet. And it's it's kind of hard to find a avian special emergency vet. Um, but I had made an appointment and was ready to go as soon as, as uh, the first available appointment came. Now, the annual wellness exams, like I said, are very, very important, but there's some other uh, illnesses over and above the arthritis that your vet's going to be looking for when they realize that your bird is a senior bird, a bird that's in the second half of their lifespan. So they often refer to a uh, major veterinary manual. It's pretty thick, uh, called the Merck Veterinary Manual. And um, what the Merck Veterinary Manual tells us to look out for with our avian patients are cataracts and other eye problems. You know, the eyes are kind of one of the first things to start declining. Birds can get cataracts just like people can, and uh, it's quite common in older birds. And they can get eye disease as well. I mean, they're scratching around their eyes, you know, with their claws, which might not always be real clean and stuff, but you know, different things can happen that cause them eye disease. One of, of course is um, malnutrition, a bird that doesn't eat a good, vast uh, range of, uh, you know, raw fresh vegetables and stuff a day, doesn't get appropriate bird vitamins, uh, 
they're more prone to getting eye disease. And so when a bird gets eye disease, it's very depressing for them. I don't know if you know this little tidbit fact, but birds have you know, excellent vision. If you think about a hawk that can be flying, you know, 500 feet in the air and spot a mouse on the ground and get to it quickly, uh, that lets you know how laser focused a bird's eyes are. Our parrots can see a range of colors that you and I can't even fathom. And so when they become uh, visually impaired, if you will, they become a little bit more depressed, they become guarded and more inactive, and they might even refuse to come out of their cage because they're just kind of wanting to stay safe in a known place that they kind of know how to get around in. So eye problems can, you know, result in uh, or snowball, I guess, into other problems that have to do with inactivity and that sort of thing. So one of those problems could be bird arthritis like Timmy has. So uh, arthritis affects nearly all large parrots at some point or another. Timmy's not considered a large parrot. He's considered a medium parrot. Uh, but, you know, birds perch on their feet even in their sleep, they're on their feet 24 seven essentially. And um, so that's why it's so important to start to really take a kind of a mental check on a frequent basis. Is my bird as active as usual? Is it guarding? Is it, am I seeing personality changes, either more timid or more aggressive than usual? Those are some clues that your bird is aging and it might be in pain and illness and having an illness. So. Arthritis is quite common. We often see, Tim's got it in the lower extremities. Like I said, he's got it in the hips, the legs, and the feet. And, uh, but it's not uncommon to see in the back and in the neck as well. But uh, with the hips, legs, and feet, you know, birds that are perching 100% of the time, those areas just don't get the rest that they need. And um, that's why exercise is so important. Maintaining an exercise regime is really important. Now, when a bird is perching in the same place all of the time because they're in pain and they don't have access to say a soft perch like this uh, rope perch. I don't usually use rope perches with my birds because I don't like the thought of them chewing on the strings, but the vet recommended that he have access to soft perching surfaces. But when the bird is perching, perching on a hard surface and afraid to move uh, because they're, they just don't feel steady on their feet per se, they can develop a, uh, a disease on the bottom of their foot pads, um, pododermatitis or something like that. I can, I'm not saying it correctly. It's uh, too long of a word for me to read without my glasses. Um, I'm aging too. <laughs> and so uh, that's kind of like, you know, bed sores on the bottom of the feet. So our birds will get maybe open wounds for perching in the same place around those joints uh, on their feet. And then uh, that can get infected both with bacterial infection and fungal. That's why it's so important to keep your elderly birds perches clean. You don't want them to get infections for, from arthrit arthritis and the bumblefoot from lack of mobility. And um, so then that disease can turn into uh, all, all the inactivity, you know, from both, you know, the foot, the bumblefoot, the, the joints and what have you can then turn into heart disease. So, you know, it's like one system kind of starts failing after another, which is kind of sad, but you know, it happens to people too. And then of course, you know, we birds have to deal with liver disease and kidney disease. I mean, fatty liver disease is a very common disease in our birds as they age. Um, a lot of birds just won't get off of an all seed diet and there's a lot of parrot caretakers that are unclear on how to help their bird move or transition to a uh, well-balanced vegetable diet or pellets. Um, usually it's a combination of uh, vegetables and pellets, uh, raw foods and, and pellets. But when a bird has had an insufficient diet and starts experiencing years and years of uh, vitamin indeficiencies and vitamin deficiencies and mineral deficiencies and malnutrition sets in, then you start seeing those internal organ damages. And that's what the vets uh, are looking for a lot of times in these wellness exams that they are doing um, as we go in um, to get our senior birds checked. So how can I help Timmy with his quality of life. That is something that's really important to me. Um, you know, 
I was thinking he's got a good 20 years left and I don't want all of that to be in horrible, um, unbearable pain. And so we've got him on a pain re uh, medicine regime. Uh, meloxicam is, the, is uh, what we're using right now, but if that doesn't work over time, then there's some other alternatives that have been um, studied to be safe on birds. But there's some things that I can do at home. Uh, not only can I continue to give him a rich range of vitamins and nutrients in the raw foods that I feed him on a daily basis, I'm going to work on expanding those out to make sure that I'm providing some of those nutrients uh, and herbs and stuff that I know are uh, helpful in pain relief. Not only nutritious, but helpful in pain relief for my bird. And uh, then I'm going to feed him some, um, you know, essential fatty acids and omega-6 to help him loosen and lubricate his joints. I'm also going to cushion his perches with the vet wrap. Uh, the vet told me to do that. And I'm going to lower his perches in his cage so that if he does indeed fall, he doesn't have far to fall. I don't want him to break a hip bone uh, because he wants to perch up high. Uh, I want him to feel safe throughout his cage and to be able to climb about and move about at a lower level where we don't have to worry about a fall injury on top of that. Another thing that I'm going to do with uh, to support Tim is to continue to give him exercise uh, to his feet by having these variable sized branches throughout his cage and then um, uh, also having different foraging stations throughout his play area in his cage so that he has to go from foraging station to foraging station to um, get his daily intake of food. And I'm going to make sure that he's able to do that, of course, over the years. But I, my goal is to keep him mobile, active, and comfortable. So those are my goals for Tim throughout this year. Now, um, head over to my website, birdsupplies.com, and check out the blog post uh, that is related to this uh, YouTube videos. It's called, um, let me scroll back up here to the title. I believe it's called Five Tips for a Happier, Healthier, Older Bird. And um, it, there's some links to other articles, like for instance, some blog posts on how to tell if your bird's in pain, and then uh, one that's specific to the arthritis. So one of the things that the Richard M. Schubold School talks about that's so important in parrot wellness is life stage uh, care. And so Timmy definitely is in that life stage care where he's needing some geriatric specialized care. And, um, as sad as it is to face, he is my buddy and I adopted him for life. And so we're going to make him as comfortable as possible. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me some thumbs up and share this video uh, with your friends and family. Um, and if you have any questions, make, make some comments and stuff. And until next week, we'll talk later. Bye-bye.